without making any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. So help me God. So help me God. All right, congratulations. You're now a citizen of Thank Dennis. You so much. America. I appreciate it. That was the moment yesterday when our next guest was officially sworn in as an American citizen. He also celebrated the occasion by changing his name. Here to tell us all about it is NBA star Ennis Cantor Freedom. I think one of the most moving things that you can witness is a citizenship ceremony. What was that like yesterday for you? Oh my God, it was probably the greatest moment in my life. Mm. You know, I have been waiting for, for this moment almost six years now. And, you know, the last, after I got my green card, you know, the, the last six years was been very rough. Obviously, Turkish government, you know, revo revoked my passport, put my name on Interpol uh, list. So it was a very r uh, rough six years. But, you know, from day one, American people opened their arm, gave me a warm uh, welcome. And I think it was dream come true. And I was, I was like, wow, I cannot believe I'm finally, you know, going to call somewhere home. Um, mm -hmm. So that definitely meant so much to me. You guys have no idea. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Great answer. Uh, you're going to wear a jersey tomorrow night. Uh, when you take the floor, on the back it will say freedom. Yep. Uh, that'll be something else to see. Uh, was there a tough question that would stump mm -hmm. us? <laughs> I mean, I'll tell you a story. First time I came to America back in 2009, I remember you know, one of my teammates were criticizing the president. And I got so scared, I turned around to him. I was like... Dude, what are you doing? They're going to throw you in a jail. <laughs> and he always started laughing. I was like, listen, listen, this is not Turkey. This is America. Yeah. You don't have to worry about that. But uh, freedom meant so much to me, you know. I wanted to make that word part of me because obviously in America you have freedom of speech, religion, expression, and press. And not many have that country uh, out there in the world uh, have that. So we should definitely feel blessed to um, be in a situation. You, just, you have. Just yeah. a couple of years ago, there was a survey that showed that most of Americans would fail the U.S. citizenship test. And Reuters says in 2018, two or three Americans would not be able to pass it. I know when my husband took it in 2006, he, he was nervous. He wanted to make sure he got all of them right. Uh, how was that test for you? I mean, to me, it was very easy because I actually studied really, really hard. And I wanted to get all the uh, answers, you know, the correct. But I was actually studying with uh, some of my American friends, and I wanted to test them. You know, I wanted to see if they actually know the answers or not, because obviously they're born here, they're from here. And I started asking, asking them the questions, and they had no idea. No. <laughs> I was like, dude, let's just, let's just yeah, work together. Yeah, we got some work to do. Let's just work together. Yeah. yeah. You exactly. should be on five tonight, by the way. Citizenship you, you test? You the okay, I'll tell, I'll tell uh, our producer, uh, Megan Albano. Uh, for a lot of people who aren't aware of your background, you're born in Switzerland, you have citizenship in Turkey, mm -hmm. so now you have dual citizenship. Uh, you have been very outspoken. You've gotten a lot of attention in this country for how strong you have been against the Chinese Communist government, their treatment of, of Uyghurs, the treatment of their own people, uh, the COVID variant, et cetera, et cetera. There, there is one man, however, a colleague of yours, who um, seems to lack amount of respect for you, and that's LeBron James. You, you have gone after him publicly, repeatedly. Well, uh, LeBron James was in Boston, uh, your town, about a week and a half ago, and he said this. I don't give too many people my energy. He's definitely not someone I would give my energy to. He's trying to use my name to create an opportunity for himself. If you've got an issue with somebody, you really come up to him. He had his opportunity tonight. I saw him in the hallway and he walked right by me. What would you say to that and perhaps a missed opportunity maybe to talk to LeBron face to face, privately? I mean, I'm I mean, if you ask my assistant coaches, he's lying. He was the one right, literally right past by me and did not uh, say a word. But, you know, I think obviously, you know, when you are when you are an athlete and signing with, you know, hypocrite kind of companies like uh, Nike, and when you're big, but when you're China, become your big boss. Obviously, you have to stay uh, remain uh, silent. But and that, that's it's just just a sh uh, shame. But you know, someone had to do it. You know, someone had to be outspoken about all the, you know, human rights violations that are happening, you know, around the world, and especially in China, because you see there's so many athletes, actors, so many celebrities are scared because they care too much about their money, their endorsement deals, um, you know, their, their contract stuff. But to me, you know, values, principles, and morals is bigger than everything. Okay, understood. You know, I, I don't care you, about you, any you of just, your... Right, got it. You just said LeBron was lying. Did you not see each other in a hallway? So... So this is what happened. Uh, I saw him on the court, and then I left the court, right? 
uh, and he was right behind me and my assistant coach was with me. I actually stopped to take a picture with one of the fans and he was the one literally right past me and didn't say a word, but I was not expecting him to say anything anyway because I don't, you, it, well, it would be did, a very uncomfortable I question. Understood, but why didn't you take that opportunity to speak to him? Well, because my, my back was turned and I, I, I didn't see him right uh, passing me. And then as soon as like I turned around, he, he got in the locker room. Even my assistant coach said, he's like, dude, LeBron just right past, uh, uh, right past you. I was like, well, I wish we, we talked. Well, you're not afraid to talk to China. And so I'm afraid I'm, I would believe that uh, you would talk to LeBron James as well because uh, you have stood up on principle <laughs> exactly. before. Uh, congratulations, fellow citizen. It's great to have you. Yeah amongst us. Thank you so much. Well done. And we'll, we'll look at the test and thank we'll get you back so to you and let you know how we do, okay? Uh, thank you, Ennis. We'll <laughs> Please, you. work on it. <laughs> we'll see you on the court tomorrow night with freedom on the back of your Thank jersey. you. Thanks.